Hello, thank you for joining us at the Ono Academic College. My name is Pinchas Cohen. I'm the chairman of the Israeli Chamber of Technical Analysts. Here I have with me today Ralph Akampora, the honorary president of the Israeli Chamber of Technical Analysts. Uh, it is an honor, it is a privilege, it is a pleasure for me to have him here. He is a legend in the field. He's someone I admire. I was his student. And nothing makes me happier than bringing him down to Israel and to teach what he has to teach. His list of accomplishments are too far for me to get into. I'll just say this. He co-founded the chartered, the Market Technician Association, which is the world's leading global technical analyst association today. He helped develop their chartered market technician, the only professional designation that the American regulators recognize. And he was their leading advocate um, in the whole process of the regulators and the SEC. He founded and was the first chairman of IFTA, the International Federation of Technical Analysts. He has held prominent positions in the prestigious, law, uh, prestigious firms of New York. Well, Ralph, there's just too much to get into with you. And um, for um, limited time, we'll just have to skip that and get to our questions. Ralph, um, you're an expert historian in the market. Give us a brief history of, uh, of technical analysis. Well, Pink, it's the, um, the first of all, thanks for having me here. I really enjoyed my stay, and it's just great seeing everybody. Uh, the history of technical analysis, um, it depends on where you want to start. Uh, it's, the Japanese claim it started in the late 1700s. The English claim that it started in the early 1600s. I know for a fact that Charles Henry Dow started in the, in the 1880s in the United States. And for sure we have quite a bit of history there. Um, where I think modern day technical analysis really starts is with the MTA itself. And it's very exciting because I feel like it's a little part of that. And it has taken the subject to a much higher professional level. And uh, what we're doing here with the Israeli Chamber of Technical Analysts is the same thing. And uh, I'm very excited about it. And thanks for uh, letting me participate. Ralph, do you have any advice to the next generation of technical analysts and investors in general? Well, I think the best advice I can give to a new generation of technicians is the same advice that I got from Richard Russell, the original Dow theorist. And I asked him that question, I said, what can we do for the next generation? He said, the best advice is never fight the primary trend. So I think that's great advice because you trade differently, you act differently in a bull market than you do in a bear market. I'm not saying you have to necessarily um, couch it all in Dow theory, but I think it's best to watch the major trend. Ralph, how does a technician do a top-down analysis? Top-down analysis, as I see it, is a multi-tiered effect. Um, you start with an index, let's say the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you study that index and all its components very, very carefully. You have an opinion on that index. The next thing you do, the next step down, is you stop looking at the index and you look at the breadth of the market. And the breadth is how many stock advances and decline every day. That gives you a feeling if the, if the majority of stocks are supporting the move in the Dow, up or down. Third thing you do is you uh, seek out the sentiment of investors, and then that can be measured any number of ways. Uh, you've got insider activity, you've got the bull bear indicator, uh, and, and that's very, very helpful, especially at extremes when you'll have extreme emotion. The VIX index is another way of m measuring volatility. Once you do that, then you start to look at sectors, and Standard & Poor's very cleverly have created over the years 10 economic sectors. It starts with consumer discretionary, ends with utilities, and all of these subgroups, about 150 subgroups. And you pick out the sectors that you think are, 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 are most attractive technically, you know, whether they're outperforming the, the market or underperforming. 
And then you, you move from there to intermarket analysis. A fellow by the name of John Murphy coined that phrase years ago. And basically what it is is taking all of the tools technicians have and applying it to commodities, fixed income, currencies, foreign markets. And then after that, you look at the exchange traded funds because, as you know, ETFs are a, a little basket of stocks. You might have a basket of, of uh, one particular sector, like an energy sector. You might have a, a basket of commodities, which, which capture the energy move. Uh, and then lastly, you look at individual stocks, the components that make up that ETF, which reflect its, the sectors and reflect the commodities and reflect the overall market. So it's a top-down. And the bottom up, you just do it the opposite way. You start with individual stocks. If there is anything you can do over, what would it be? If you could do it differently. If I could do it differently, uh, this is a personal question. Um, I wish I had met my wife 30 years ago and not 10 years ago. Okay, let me ask that again. What was your worst market call? Okay, my worst market call um, was in 1987. Actually, it was about two weeks before the market fell apart. And I was in a uh, publication called Barron's. It's a weekly publication put out by Dow Jones. And the feature article was myself and several other technicians. And in that article, several of them are actually very, very negative. I was somewhat cautious, but I, 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 I didn't use the word crash. And, and two of the gentlemen did. And in hindsight, I, I wish I used that little word crash. It would have made me feel a lot better. Um, I didn't get enough people out at that time. I'll be nice. What was your best market call? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it was in June of 1995. Um, I came out with a, a report saying that the market was going to go many thousands of points higher. Uh, I think the Dow was somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,800 to 4,000. And Pincus, uh, I did a lot of research. I spent a month in the library. In those days, no internet, so I literally went through stacks and stacks of Wall Street journals. And I felt from my technical research that we were living a period similar to the early 60s. And as I was going through that report, though, all those newspapers, it, it, it became very, very clear to me that we were in an environment that would be low inflation, low interest rates. And when I put out this 60-page report, the biggest criticism I got were from economists. They were saying, how could I do this because I'm not an economist? And my response is, no, I'm not an economist, but I'm following the, the leading eco economic indicators, the stock market itself. So um, you can call it luck. I call it research. And we got to 7,000, and then I raised it to 10,000. I know this must be a difficult question, but I have to ask, what is your favorite technical indicator? Yeah, I, I, that's a great question. It's, it's asked a lot, Pink. It's, it's, um, people feel that there's the one magical indicator or that special one that Ralph's not sharing with anybody. And I've been teaching for so long, I share everything. So, and um, I, I can't really answer that question. I, I, I'm a believer that you have to be eclectic and you use everything. Don't hang your hat on one hook. I think that's the biggest danger technicians can make. They'll fall in love with Elliott Wave or something like that and, and not look at everything else. And I, I, that's, that's bad. However, having said all that, if, if you put a gun to my head and you said, gee, Ralph, you, that's the one thing you have to have. Well, I have to have breath. I have to have market participation. If, if, if the leading averages are doing whatever and it's not supported by a majority of stocks, that right there tells me there's a problem. So I have to have breath. Is there anything that's keeping you up at night? Are there any potential problems? Um, there's one that bothers me a little bit, and it's, it's something that uh, hopefully the, the current market negates any concern about that. You know, we might be getting a rally short term, and if it's broad based and lifts places like China and India, and Brazil, and I, I, I just, uh, over the last few, few months, um, those markets have been a lot weaker than most other markets. And, um, you know, what's so great, uh, Pink, is about technical analysis, it forces you to ask questions. And I keep asking myself, why are we having problems in those countries? And it haunts me to think that maybe there is a, uh, and I'm not an economist, but maybe there is a bubble, a real estate bubble in China. Um, Maybe, maybe they have a problem that, then, that we all are not seeing. So that just um, makes me wonder. 
What is happening in the market right now? Well, in, in earlier this year, I, I was very impressed with all of the problems we had globally, geopolitical problems in the Mideast and then the, the, the catastrophe in Japan and the U.S. market, I'll take the Dow for example, it dropped I think maybe six, seven percent. That's amazing and I, I, I use that word because I'm shocked. I would think with these problems we would have been down 20 percent at least quickly. That did not happen. So the resilience of the market and then going to new highs was very, very, that was the first half of the year. So I was excited and, and still bullish and I have a, a, a pretty handsome target for the Dow for the end of the year, so close to 14,000. But in the May and June, the picture changed. And as I mentioned before, I was starting to see deterioration in other markets that I didn't quite understand. Plus, we were seeing deterioration in commodities uh, across the board. Now, hopefully, that is corrected. Um, another thing that I want to share with, with market students is that whenever you have rallies, they have to be sustainable rallies. They have to be put, they have to have breath and you have to have leadership. And we were lacking that in the last couple of months. I, hopefully, the, the rally that we're getting now above the March lows, that's another key, key important point, that everything has to say above the March lows. If they break below the March lows, and then I think you complete uh, technical tops. But that's not the case in a lot of markets. So keep our fingers crossed. We get some nice technical rallies. They broaden out, and then we're off to the races again. But there's an old president of the United States. His name was Harry Truman. And Harry Truman says, I'm from Missouri. Show me. So I have to see the evidence first. Ralph, for a man who's given so much, what's next for you? Well, Pink is the fact that you invited me here and what you and I have done in the last few hours, actually, is really, really exciting. And, and I'm not just saying this to make you feel good, but I think you and I feel good. It works. It, it works. Yes. But the fact that we can start something here in Israel. I feel like I'm back 45 years ago in the States. Same thing. There were non-believers. You had people that were starting to talk about it. They were a little shy maybe to share some, uh, some, some of their own knowledge of technical analysis. But we had a great conference today and uh, people lined up at the end and I could see the spirit, the animal spirits and then everybody. I think, it, I think things are going to be very, very exciting for technical analysis in Israel. And I'm so happy that you made me be a little part of that. Well, Ralph, I think it's appropriate that you have come to Israel personally. After uh, learning technical anal anal analysis about you, I've often said that learning from you technical analysis is like learning the Torah from Moses. And only recently I discovered that you were this close to becoming a priest. Is this true? Yep. How does an almost priest become a Wall Street dog? Uh, that, actually, it happened by accident literally an automobile accident and uh, not to make a long story uh, when I had the, the surgery I had the surgery in 1967 and um, I had to rethink my whole life I was on crutches for many many months and um, my father's best friend was the man that was able to get me this fine physician and every day Mr. Downey would come to the hospital and with whatever he was reading, he would throw in the bed. And it was Wall Street Journal, Forbes Magazine, Business Week. And I kept reading it and reading it. And he said to me, what are you going to do someday? I said, gee, I don't know, but I like reading this stuff. He said, oh, that's research. And he tried to get me a job. And, and, I, and I found that technical was... analysis. Ralph, thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best.